Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. Now this is by Tom Scioli, I assume that's how his name is said, and 10 Speed Press. You can find out more information on their website, 10speed.com. Now the price is $28.99, and this is the biography of Jack Kirby, all the various characters he's created, his early years, the life, obviously the wartime, the years of problems with comics, and much, much more. And obviously later on with Marvel and then DC as well. It's all in here. It's a packed solid book, 200 pages in colour all the way through. That's about the size of a standard comic book. You can see there, size it. And it's a very nice quality hardback book. So let's just go through it. Now it's a biography. It's not an autobiography. It's not a memoir, etc. It's told from Jack Kirby's point of view all the way through it. However, most of it anyway. There's a few bits where it slightly deviates from that. But... It's from his point of view, other people have different impressions of what happened at that particular moment. But it starts right at the beginning, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And uh, the artwork is very unusual. You may not get used to it straight away. I mean, it's certainly, initially when I looked at it, I thought, mm, I'm not certain I really like that. I picked it up in the shop and I was thinking, mm. However, I did actually warm to it very quickly and it's absolutely fine. And it reads well, scans nicely, thoroughly enjoyable all the way through. No problem reading it at all. So you've got here, I love the use of some very early comic strips. They're obviously Jack Kirby reading. And also there's even odd bits here. You've got to be speaking in German there. And you think, hmm, okay, I guess, of course, would have done. But that's, it just was a surprise when I just, and of course you've got all the here, the streets, where he obviously learns to uh, fight for himself in the streets. And you've got, I love this. There's some really quite inf information that I didn't realise. or never really given much thought about. Also, Wonder Stories. Now, I read a few of the Wonder Stories. I'm not saying they were the easiest of reads, I must admit. Now, anyway, I love like, the before the golden age kind of thing, those sort of books. So you've got here, and also, obviously, all the troubles on the street as well. And obviously, here's uh, learning to draw and going off at the cinema and much, much more. Just great. Violence was what we knew, as it says there. But it's also about the early years of comics. So if you really want to find out what happened like the 1930s, 1940s, etc. There's all the various characters that turned up there. Some of the, uh, obviously, Martin Goodman, all the various other characters. Mort Meskin, Bob Kane, Lou Fine. Absolutely all superb artists. Absolutely superb. Especially uh, Mort Meskin, one of my favourites. We've got here the World Fair. I love that. 1939 World Fair. And of course, when you look at some of that imagery, you think, oh, yes, that looks very, very similar. I must admit, I love that. Futurama showed me a world I wanted to inhabit. Red Raven. Perhaps not. I've never read Red Raven. I think in all these years, I love that bit with the vision. So there's a lot of references to various characters. And also Captain Marvel. I never realised that it was involved with Captain Marvel. Obviously very briefly, but... Uh, and also you've got here about the shield, all the characters that came out, very similar. Of course, you've got uh, Captain America with his shield, slightly different from the day that, how, see there, you can see there. And I love the bit of use of television in the background. Television, the cover of Captain America's comics featured the futuristic new invention of television. And also all the characters that you use later as well. You've got Tuck, Kate, well, Commandy and all those sort of things. You can see the sort of uh, early sort of references, those sort of Kazar and those sort of things. However, no, it didn't probably do Kazar. However, let's just go for all the verses. You got Stan Lee turning up as well. So that's so great. And also, of course, the first collaboration with Stan Lee, which of course was a tech story. I've read that and I wasn't super impressed by that. Obviously, Mitch is one. And this, the Captain Marvel. But I knew I was, I was just, that's what I was just looking for about the Captain Marvel. But it goes through, obviously, you got, and then you got the war years, obviously, get married and. Actually, the war bit is quite brutal in places. I mean, it, obviously, the conflict, he went through a lot in that. So uh, I love the bits where he's obviously, because he's an artist, that he, he's put out to certain... Uh, and then he comes back, of course, and you've got all the crime. Because, of course, at that point, superhero comics changed, sort of went downhill a bit, which is really quite sad, because I, I wish they'd continued on, but they didn't. Obviously, in the late... 40s, they sort of disappeared completely near enough. Superman, etc. A few were still going, but most of them were gone. And you've got like headline comics. And I loved about the use, obviously, himself in a picture, obviously, there with Joe Simon as well as the, the copper, apparently. And you've got Mad and all that. And you've got lots of examples of lots of these characters I didn't realize that he was involved in. All the various things and 
not the Fighting American. Oh, I remember Fighting American, but there were many others. I thought, oh, oh right, that's wow. That's, uh, and also lots and lots of, I love about the Thor as well. That's just great. Of course, you've got similarity, obviously, with the Thor later on. And Challenges of the Unknown, etc. Amazing stories. And also Bill Finch's mythology. I remember reading that. I love that. It wasn't science fiction, just took equal inspiration from many other things as well. All the inspirations as well. Some of it you think, oh, that came later. The Commandy, etc. And some of the drawing. I love the Spider-Man one here. Of course, the Fly. So it's examples. And some of the artwork is just absolutely but And just really great to see examples there. It's obviously the unfinished Spider-Man proposal. Would have been weird seeing Spider-Man like, but we, of course we'd have got used to it. Now we would have been, everyone would have said, what? A young kid that's sort of Spider-Man doing, no, that would never work. And obviously Ant-Man and all those sort of characters and the, the Hulk as well, combination as it says here of, of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which of course he is, and the Wolfman and Frankenstein, etc. A whole load of com Never really thought about it particularly. Obviously I always thought more Frankenstein, but I guess, yes, Jekyll and Hyde. Definitely. Of course, Jekyll and Hyde, there was Dr. Hyde they used later on as a Thor villain as well. And I love the fact about Iron Man as well. Created concept of Iron Man. They cover past, obviously, to Don Heck and, uh, and Daredevil, all the various... Yeah, just great running through all these and, of course, the Avengers. It says here about also, uh, I didn't realise that, Human Torch, Submariner and Captain America as a team that would have been... Now, I think that would have worked. I think that would have worked as well, but it was still good that, in a sense, we got the Avengers. Maybe, of course, that team would have been expanded anyway. Eventually, you would have had uh, other characters turn it up into that thing. But you've also got, I love this, about Marvel Pay, all the things, all the story. It's all, obviously, his disappointment where, obviously, which I must admit, personally, hmm, it is pretty sad that uh, they didn't get some paid for it as well. It would have been, obviously, but that was the way. And you've got other characters, obviously. And that, of course, created those tensions in the uh, thing that later on. So when you actually get to some of the later Fantastic Fours, there was a sort of real noticeable change. And he mentions like the monocle, where the characters sort of go downhill a bit at that point. You've got here about Stanley jumping on desks, waving his arms like crazy man. You've got scenes all the way through this. A Stanley and Jack Kirby production. And of course, all the various things that he had to, the contracts that were put in front of him, should he sign this or not. Let's go through all those sort of things, backwards and forwards. And uh, yes, it, I mean, obviously I look at it and think, oh, it should be a lovely world where everyone produces wonderful artwork and everyone is paid to the hilt for producing such masterpieces. But of course, it's a world of business. And so it's, uh, there's a lot of ins and outs of, and obviously you've got here, Stan, I loved the bit where he obviously went to, uh, California, I love about the motorcycle gangs as well. And of course also about Silver Surfer. And there's everything. There's literally a history of comics. This book is just packed solid with lots and lots of... And of course all these things are all open to interpretation. You will look at it one way or look at it another way. And of course then he went off to DC. And that's all featured in here as well. Some of this, I must admit, I didn't really particularly know much about the DC side. I was more a Marvel Comics fan. And uh, so DC, all the Jimmy... I did buy some at the time but they didn't turn up so often in my town. So uh, all the dark side and things was sort of like only vaguely known. And of course, I love this one. <laughs> the Origin of Marvel Comics by Stanley. I, of course, bought that and obviously got Jack Kirby's opinion of that and so on and so on. So it's just pages upon pages upon pages. And there's sort of the scenes where he's, his kids are saying, Grandpa, Grandpa, can I get Iron Man? And he's sort of, you can see him sort of, all the way through his life. So it's just great. And it's uh, that one as well. I must admit, Phantom Force. I didn't know about that one. Should do, but I didn't. So, and then you got the back, you've got all the information there. And at the end, you finish off with a note. So this book is just beautifully drawn all the way through. Real good story, interesting, all the way through. So, and there's obviously more there. But it has an unusual style with this, uh, this Weird as if it's a rough comic, like an old comic. It's all be roughed up. Obviously, been it's just weird. Very. I don't know if other books have been done like. I have never seen a book like this, for ever. Actually, to be honest, I can't think. Obviously, the grand design ones come to mind, but still, I think this is even more so than that. I mean, it's just very like an old. I'm surprised they didn't get sort of like rusty staples in here as well. Sort of, you can see, you know, where the mould sort of come, whatever it is that comes out. I hate that. So. Uh, those sort of things. However, 
Right at the back, you've got obviously a nice index, which is always good. All the various people like uh, you know, Russ Manning, or oh, Russ Manning's mentioned here, Manili, um, Manhunter, all the Marvel Boy, Marvel Mania, Marx Brothers, and so on. All the various key characters always in the index. Indexes are always great. Maybe not particularly the best comic read, but still absolutely fascinating. And I love this book. Absolutely. I've read quite a few sort of biographies, autobiographies, etc. Comics. And I think, to be honest, I think this is probably one of the best ones I've ever read because it really, I think if it was just written just as a, like a 400 page autobiography, I should say, it might have been okay, but it would have probably been a bit, hmm. It would have been interesting, I'm certain. But at the same time, I think this brought it to life and actually made me so thoroughly enjoying it that I ended up rushing out and getting this one. Kirby, King of Comics. So I bought that as well. And also picking up some of my, well, a fair number of Kirby comics that I've got over the years. And this one is just absolutely superb as well, full of lots and lots. Though this is slightly different from what I was expecting because I have seen a copy where it's hardback and it's slightly bigger. But however, it was great to get again. I've never bought it before, but I have read it before. So uh, my mate had it and I was reading it when I was there. So you got here, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. And I really recommend it. Even you might initially think, oh, I don't like that artwork. And I have to say the artwork is so unusual that that was my first thought. But I actually warmed to it and I think it's great. And I love the, the cover. I love it. It's a, that's just a great cover as well. Lovely shiny the way I've done. Brilliant. So totally, totally recommended.